the hell did I just make? What's going on guys, King Shrats here, back in another video on the channel, and today, <laughs> why do I laugh when I do this all the time? Um, I was going to make shepherd's pie, but as you can see, the last minute I had some extra pizza crust, and I was like, yo, you had pizza two days in a row. So we made a shepherd's pizza. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. I mean, I know that the stuff on the pizza is good. Look, everything's good on pizza. It's going to be a W. Anyway, if you're digging the content, you want to see more pizza, more weird stuff, and force the food reviews like you see on my left. You know what I'm gonna say? Yeah, like, subscribe, thumbs up. It's 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 just cheesy. I know. I I don't like saying it. I'm not gonna lie. Let me start with these though. No, let me start with the pizza. But I want to get into these like ASAP, ASAP, because I love flips. Anyway, uh, Shepherd's Pizza. You saw the making of. It's got basically a base of cheesy garlic mashed potatoes, and then of course the shepherd's aspect. Well. It's actually a cottage pizza. If you don't know the difference between a shepherd's pie and a cottage pie, a shepherd's pie uses lamb, a cottage pie uses beef. And this is beef, because, you know, I'm too broke to make lamb. But anyway, I cut this already. Let's see if I can screw this up. We're gonna use an end piece today. And we're gonna say, what are we saying to a shepherd's pizza? Can y'all see the steam? I'm scared. All right, W or L, let's see. <laughs> Look. Stop. It's all about just having the right ingredients on it. Again, because I'm in love with the truffle oil. I used the base, and you saw it in the beginning. I used truffle oil and some seasoning, you know, garlic, uh, you know, pepper, salt, just basic stuff, but the truffle was really coming through on the bottom. Something's wrong with me. Who would even do this? Your boy. But mashed potatoes, sour cream, chives, garlic, salt, pepper. That's it. Cheese. And more cheese. Obviously the ground beef is seasoned with the vegetables that you find in shepherd's pie plus more because I always use the same tired ass mixed vegetables because I don't know, it's a good way to get the nutrients in. So I just throw them in everything. And then of course we got the cheese dipping sauce for that crusty crust, which I turned the wrong way because you know me, it's like 4 a.m. That's a dub. Sheesh. All right, let me get to the flips first. I just want to try these. I've been doing my desserts at the end, but if you are unfamiliar with flips, they're usually chocolate covered pretzels, right? Um, they had a bunch of different flavors, but the OGs were the chocolate covered pretzels. Then they had vanilla, had some caramel, some other stuff, which were good. But chocolate covered pretzels, how many people are making fun of the way I say chocolate? I'm sorry. Anyway, are like one of my favorite snacks and flips. I used to, eat, I say this all the time, but I used to eat bags of them, man. Like, like stupid bags when I was in high school, especially like after practice, I would go like to the 7 -Eleven. It doesn't matter. The stories don't matter. So they drop these stuffed flips. And of course, can you see that? Like, do I even have to say anything? These flips are milk chocolate, peanut butter filled pretzels. There's no way that these are gonna be in L. I pre-opened these just before on camera because every time I don't, it takes me 17 hours to open something. And it's just embarrassing because of my sausage fingers. But let me just take a couple out of these. Also, what I do with chocolate covered pretzels, and this was no exception, is I had these in the freezer. So you can see they're kind of like a little bit frozen. I don't like when they melt in my hand, but let's just do this. Do I have to say anything? They're chocolate covered pretzels with peanut butter on the inside. Let me. Peanut butter is slightly frozen. But you can see it's in there. Salty, peanut butter, chocolatey. I just can't get a clean bite on this. Y'all don't have to take my word for it, but check it one more time. Frozen peanut butter on the inside. I freeze a lot of snacks that are chocolate, also Pop-Tarts. I feel like I always blows people's mind when I say 
pop tarts are actually really good frozen. I'm gonna tell you this one more time. Brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts in the freezer are a dub. If you've never done it, put them in the freezer, try them, come back, write me a comment, tell me you tried them, tell me you love them. I just, I, you know, I like sharing the good food stuff. Let me get you one more. Let me get into this pizza. I'm eating that whole bag. There's no way I'm not. Wow. There's no way they're going to be bad, right? Right? <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah. Yeah. If you see them, get them. Like, you know what to expect. Milk chocolate. Nice salty, crunchy pretzel. Nice peanut butter on the inside. Addictive. Super addictive. The only thing that make those better is if they drop with like Reese's on the inside because Reese's peanut butter has a little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't matter either way. Back to the pizza. Show and tell time one more time. Y'all probably like, what the hell? I'm telling you, you gotta just put weird stuff on stuff and it turns out good. That's so good. That is really impressive. I really was just gonna make like shepherd's pie of some sort. I don't know. Last minute I was like, yo, I got this pizza crust. I gotta do something with it. So I said, screw it, let's just make a shepherd's pizza. With a soup spoon that you're supposed to use for like ramen. But that's okay. Put that cheese up on here. And I know you guys can see, I still got my dipping sauce from the dad. You know it's going down. I like the spicy one better, but that's still a dub. I actually once made this in a sandwich. I made like a shepherd's pie sandwich. I, look, I put weird stuff in bread and weird stuff on pizza, and it's just, I don't know. I also put a lot of weird stuff in tortillas back in the day. Mmm. They're really not about the pizza. It's about the fact that the mashed potatoes and the, the meat mixture are good. But it's not like the pizza's hurting it. Oh, this is sexy. Oh, yeah, so I'm high. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to get a little like burnt on the crust, double crunch. But I like the inside to not be like crunchy. I want the whole thing to be like a cracker, you know. With thin crust pizza, one of the main reasons I don't like it is after a while it starts to hurt my teeth because I'm eating the whole pizza. You know what I'm saying? So like this inside piece. Won't have any of that. I've always had sensitive teeth. Eating like too much cold stuff, um, or like crunchy stuff, my teeth gonna hurt. It was until I like had to get like better toothbrushes, but even like in my twenties and teens, right, teens. I would brush my teeth with like a children's toothbrush, which took like forever, <laughs> but I had to do it because like the bigger bristles used to hurt my teeth. I know there's not anything structurally wrong with them. They're just sensitive. Some people just have sensitive teeth. Um, obviously I've been to the dentist, you know, I don't have like anything structurally, like there's nothing like serious, but I had to get like the toothpaste for the sensitive teeth. It's a hassle. First world problems, all right? I feel like everything I get can't be normal. Even like, okay, weird question. I'm guessing 97% of the people watching this wear deodorant, right? Do you get regular or clinical strength deodorant? Because I haven't used regular deodorant probably since I was like 18. I've been clinical strength straight up. I don't know how y'all use a regular kind. 
I sweat right through that. I'm kind of a sweaty guy. I know it's probably not attractive. But I'm pretty drippy. Yeah. What can you do? I don't smell. I just sweat a lot. Now, the weird thing is, my feet sweat. Can I be talking about this? Are y'all grossed out? Can I, can, I, can, I, can I continue? Y'all can't even answer me yet. Mmm. With a cheese, too. Mmm. But yeah. My feet sweat. Is that weird? My sweaty feet. Probably is weird, isn't it? But all right. I'm not trying to impress nobody. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. There's no cap, no cap in my wrap. I tell you, I gotta get some of this. This is late. I'm trying not to. Damn, I did it anyway. I'm like heavy handed. I always break. That's why I like I, I had to open the bag. Every time I have the chips or something and I, I review them and I open the bag first, like I drop half the damn thing and it just, it's embarrassing. Hmm. That garlic butter. Mmm. Come here. Let me get a little. Mm hmm. I bet when I tilted my head up, you could see all the way into my brain with them big nostrils. I know. I know I got big nostrils. I mean, that's cool. You know, there's upsides and downsides to it. Upside. I smell everything. Downside. I smell everything. I have like supersonic smell. Because of the nostrils. So when something smells good, it's a great feeling. But you also got to think not everything smells good. I had to, I asked my mail person today, the person who delivers my mail. I said, excuse me, do you smell a skunk? I've been losing my mind for like the last four days. Every time I walk outside my house, I can smell a skunk, but I can't see it. And there's not many places for the skunk to hide, but I know it's around, even during the day, because skunks usually like are like running around at nighttime. They're like more, you know, so I've been losing my mind because I don't want my dogs to get sprayed. My pit bull got spayed, spayed. no, he's a male, got sprayed once already. And that was a circus. So before I leave my house with my dogs, every time, I have to search all over the place just to make sure that this skunk isn't anywhere in sight. Because if my dog sees it and gets near it, it's a wrap. He got sprayed once right in the face. And it was like late, like probably like 10 o'clock. And I always check outside because there's also a group of cats um, that hang out around my house. There's like six cats, strays. And sometimes they'll go in my yard and just be chilling. There's times where I come pull up in my driveway and I swear to you, there's like three cats in, in, in like the grass, like on the side or like even just chilling. I have video of it too because I send it to my friends sometimes because these cats don't care. Like. There's something about like street cats, like around me. They don't care. They're like pigeons in New York City. They don't care. I'll pull up. Cat don't even move. Just laying there like. I was work, bro. I'm just looking like, hey. I don't got no beef with you, bro. But I got two dogs, and if they come, they're gonna chase you. I'm not, you know. 
Like, do something here. And he got the one, like, black and white spotted cat. He's, like, the leader. And he kind of got the jet the message. Because he's, like, he about to bring them dogs out here. And they all just got up in unison and just rolled out. Like, we back tomorrow, bro. It's crazy. I have, like, animal kingdoms in my backyard. But. I don't know if you've been ever been around, like, city, like, stray animals. They don't care. Because they're used to people. They don't care. The pigeons in New York City will walk on you. Like, normally, if you're in like the suburbs or like a rural place and a bird's around and you start walking towards the bird, you know, not have bad intentions, you're just walking towards the bird. The bird be like, oh, I'm out. Not city ones. They don't care. City pigeons just be, they don't even fly. They just start hopping. You want something, man? You want something to eat? The other birds that don't care, seagulls on the beach. Anybody who's been to a beach with seagulls, there was also a group of seagulls used to hang around at McDonald's when I was younger. There was like a bunch of them, like like not even joking, like fifty of them used to be in in the in the parking lot. I have seen seagulls personally steal people's food. Out of your hand. You're holding a carton of fries. I remember we were sitting outside of McDonald's. This particular one we used to go to all the time as a kid. We were riding bikes there. So sometimes we would just sit outside because they had like a, like a little, was it playground? Play, like, you know, with, the, with the balls and stuff. I don't think it's still there anymore, but we used to have that like a little, little, you know, them dirty things we would jump in, but. We just chill outside. Pink lemonade, by the way. And sometimes, like, you know, somebody knew, or they wasn't really, like, you know, because sometimes, like, you know, like, literally, like, you know, I'm talking, like, 11, 12 years old. Usually, you got, like, your nucleus, like, your, your crew, which it might be, like, three, four people. But then every once in a while, like, you'll get a tag along, like, three other, like, two other people. Like, oh, y'all going to ride some bikes with y'all. And... They don't really know <laughs> what's up. So we was there. And we sat down on a little ledge. And my dude put his fries down just like this. Right? Sitting up in a fry container. And we was all kind of just standing around. Like we weren't all sitting next to each other, but he was specifically sitting down. And it was right in the middle of the parking lot. It was like a tree. And we all looked at each other at the same time. And we was like, bro, pick your fries up. And he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, pick your damn fries up. <laughs> and he was like, anybody gonna take my fries? I said, no, no, no person's gonna take your fries. I never forget that. And he looked at me and he was like, what? He looked away for two seconds. Seagull was like, near pow. Took his fries, not a fry. His fries, and all you see is this big white seagull flying off one man's fries. They're different. Though I will say this, when I was in Iowa, the squirrels were like that. Where I live, in Jersey, there's squirrels everywhere, of course, the trees, squirrels, right? They're very small, right? And they don't bother anybody. They just be up in the tree. And if they see you on the ground, they might have a little like acorn or something. Eat acorn, get out your way. The ones in Iowa, bro. First of all, these squirrels were like cats. They were huge. And they wouldn't move. Squirrel be in the tree, the acorn. Something. Man. You got class today? Yes, I'm doing monologue for animals. And I remember when I first got there, I couldn't get over it. I was like, yo, these squirrels are massive. And then my friends were like, you know, because they're off in the Midwest. I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, the squirrels by me, they don't lift weights or something. Because these boys, they be on a tree like. Because you know how a squirrel climb halfway up the tree and just chill? These squirrels are like. It's my tree, bro. I'm not playing either. They were huge. Midwest squirrels build different. 
don't think I'm playing. They're huge. And the other thing that there was a ton of on campus too. We see these in New Jersey occasionally, but not often. Rabbits. They were everywhere. When you're in New Jersey and you see a rabbit, you're like, oh crap, a rabbit. And you see it, and you're like, oh my god, I don't really see rabbits that much. Out there, there'd be like 20 rabbits just hopping on the street. And this is also another thing I never even knew existed until I got to me was. And one specific year, my freshman year, there was like a, what do you, what do you call that? Like when there's just a bunch, like an, an abnormal amount. There, was, there were bugs. I don't know what you call that. Somebody's going to say in the comments. I know, because I'm like, my brain's not working properly. But that specific year, they were called Asian beetles. Which looked like ladybugs, but they were orange. These things had no chill. Like, first of all, they were massive amounts of these things. And my lady bite. <laughs> I've never seen this thing in my life. I could be playing like football and a freaking beetle to pow right in your face. All over. And it was like all on everything. Like there was like oh, a ton of them. One kid. On my team, had to go to the ER because an Asian beetle flew in his eye and he couldn't get it out. Like in his eye. You see a lot of stuff, crazy stuff on the football field, but that was the first. You know, broken stuff and stuff like that. But I never seen somebody go to the ER because of a a bug in his eyeball. Only in Iowa. Iowa is just a different state, man. Like. Iowa looked like New Jersey, but the difference is, like, in New Jersey, once you get to the end of town, you're in another town. Like, if I'm here and I cross the street, I'm in another city. Iowa, when you're in a city, look just like Jersey. The difference is when you get to the end of the town, you know you're in the town because there's a cornfield there. <laughs> it's just, you like, because it doesn't even make sense. Like, I feel like cornfields should be, like, on a, like, the farm would be right next to your house. It's like, what the hell? It's different. But I did like it out there, though. Like, it was fun. I couldn't live there forever. But it was definitely cool to get out there and just see, like, the world or lack thereof. Other things about Iowa. They have every restaurant that we have here, you know, uh, you know, Popeyes and all that stuff. Cause the difference is you gotta drive like three hours to get to one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, I couldn't deal with that. But the thing that got me the most, because I'm a foodie, right? I care about eating. And you know, I've said this a bunch, but I come from a predominantly Italian like neighborhood. I grew up, most of my like people I knew were Italian. So I was. Which means they would hate my pizza, for starters. And for seconders, I'm a little bit of like a pasta snob. Um, I like different kinds of pastas instead of traditional pasta. But it, the pasta still has to be cooked right. It has to be al dente. It has to be, you know, I said this before, and some of you guys disagree with me, which is cool. Like, you like what you like, but, excuse me, I don't like pasta that's drowning in sauce. I like my pasta to be coated with sauce. I don't like when it's, like, swimming in sauce. And a lot of people, especially, like, non-Italian, just, like, Americans who make pasta, like, you eat spaghetti. Like, they pour mad spaghetti sauce in their pasta, and I'm like, it, for me, it's like, whoa. But... Eat it how you like. I'm not saying like dumb for liking it that way. But anyway, the thing that got me the most. Okay, two things. All the people that knew I was from Jersey and knew like kind of my background and where I was from and like, you know, that I couldn't get like good Italian food in Iowa. They would always try to take me to two places. One, Olive Garden. 
No shade to Olive Garden, because I'm not saying Olive Garden is nasty, because it's not nasty. It's pretty good. It's all right. Like, it's, it's okay. But I'm going to tell you this. This is real. If you go to the frozen food section, wherever you are, go to the frozen food section, go to the frozen, I don't know where it would be, like the pasta, frozen, like dinners, I don't know what the hell it is, but find yourself a bag called Bertoli. That's what it's called. It's like Italian meals in a bag, like tortellini, uh, you know, like bow ties, and whatever, be strong, whatever. Go home, follow the instructions on a bag, which usually is literally just heat the damn thing up and eat it. And tell me it's not better than Olive Garden, because even Bertoli is better than Olive Garden. Not that Olive Garden is bad. The breadsticks are decent, right? But for me, that's not fancy eating, and that's not like primo Italian food. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I think of Olive Garden, it's like the Applebee's of Italian food. Like, nothing wrong with Applebee's, but if I want like a gourmet burger, I'm not going to Applebee's. Like, if I want an okay burger that's like a respectable burger, you eat it, you go to Applebee's. So that's how I feel about Olive Garden. But out there, Olive Garden is like going to like Roots Crisp. It's like five star eating. <laughs> like bottomless breadsticks. <laughs> Again, <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying like the difference in culture. But the one that really got me. Really, I was like. There's a place in the Midwest. Now, I don't know if it's anywhere else, but specifically I know it's in Iowa. Fast food Italian. Some things are not meant to be fast food. Italian food, I'm not going through a drive-thru and asking for spaghetti and meatballs. It was called, I'm not, I don't want to say it because it sounds like I'm being mad. Like. It don't matter. Anyway, the place is called Fazoli's. And you can look it up. It's like a McDonald's, but like pasta and spaghetti and, and like cricket. I was baffled by this. You can go and get like a number four, which is like like fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> wow. And it took me to this place. And they're like, oh, you'll love it. Bro, I took one bite of that pasta. <laughs> I was, I was sitting in a restaurant, and I, like, got my little plastic fork in a little plastic container. And I'm like, listen, maybe they caught him on a bad day. I don't know. But the pasta was, like, soggy. And, like, I, oh, man. I never went back. I never went back. Mm-mm. No. Maybe I caught him on a bad day. But there's certain things that just... Fast food really it. Like, even for me, and we don't have this these around here anymore. I don't even really think there's that many left. Um, but like Long John Silvers, that's borderline. It depends on what you get from there. But to me, like, fast food seafood is like pushing it. You know, Popeyes pushes it a little bit, but like that's not what they do. So it's not like their thing, but they still do it sometimes, like the fish sandwich. But across the street from my house in college, I lived on like a university drive, meaning like all the stores were on that specific street. They had a KFC slash Long John Silvers, which for some unforeseen reason are nowhere around me. We don't have any of those here, but if you don't know, like Yum Brands owns all of these restaurants. They own KFC, Taco Bell, uh, they own Long John Silver's. I believe they owned A and W. Well, anytime that you own any of these, a lot of these places, like KFC slash Taco Bells, are really popular, which I think is dope. Like if they had those there here, here I'd be like eating there all the time because I can get a bucket of chicken and some tacos. Like that's a dub. So every once in a while, I get KFC. I used to do the little famous bowls. Like that was my thing. And every once in a while, like I try my luck. Because the thing I did like from Long John Silver's was like the um, uh, hush puppies. Those were decent. But I didn't like like the cod and stuff like that. Like, 
I don't know, I'm picky about my seafood too, which is why I usually don't order fish sandwiches. Um, unless I get like the, uh, like if you get like a filet of fish, because that's not like like real fish, like that's a fish stick, but in the patty for example, you know what I'm saying? But to get like a, like a, like a cod filet from a fast food place is just something very, I don't know. I'd rather go to a mom and pop, you know, because they like getting the fish and frying it themselves. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, I'm weird. Anyway, that was a highly satisfying pizza. Um, I'm depressed that I'm gonna run out of my, my garlic dippy sauces and these flips. Yeah, man. Done you. Get them. Anyway, we was in the kitchen today. Third day of pizza in a row. Will we have pizza again tomorrow? I don't know. Let's <laughs> find out tomorrow. But I love y'all, man. We'll be back. More content. Y'all know what it is. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.